Women of Reddit, what is the most misogynistic experience you've ever had? What makes you feel discriminated against or objectified? When I was 13 or 14, I went to a Jets game with a friend. Football, not hockey. Her parents sent us to get snacks during the game, and a group of men started shouting show us your boobs at us. That used to be a common thing at the old Giants stadium during Jets games, and they were doing it to a lot of women and girls. I was a Giants fan and did not know this was a thing but we ignored it. We had to pass these guys to get back to our seats and some of them started heckling us. You be ignoring us. And a group of them surrounded and started groping us. It was worse for my friend, she was more of a target because she was more developed whereas I looked younger. A couple of older men broke it up but it was really awful. My friend was sobbing and I was too shocked to say anything. The drunk men who did it were in their 20s and 30s. We both still had braces. It was kind of like a loss of innocence. Those guys acted like we owed them something just because we were female. I was working at a landfill site. My primary duty was as way scale operator but I also worked in the yard and would occasionally take a truck out. They held a vote and successfully unionized but for some reason I wasn't enrolled. When I asked what was going on and why wasn't I being enrolled in the union, my boss replied that the union was for the men and if I wanted to be a union member I could be signed up with the girls who work at the head office, which was a different union and not even at the same location as me. Long story short, I went after them for sexual discrimination and won. Good for you. Frick those guys. This is the one that sticks with me most. My first job out of college was pretty great. I worked hard and got along with my co-workers, many of whom were men. I was green and I learned a lot from everyone around me. On my last day there, we all went out for farewell drinks at a nearby bar. Most people could only stay for one drink, and even though I had switched to water after two beers, I felt I should stick around until everyone went home as it was a celebration in my honor. The crowd dwindled down to myself, one other, male, staffer and my boss. My boss began to make advances toward me. He placed his hand on my hand. I move it. He placed his hand on my thigh. I switched seats. When my co-worker went to the restroom, he leaned in and told me he want to hike up my skirt and fillet my virgin butt. I told him he'd had too much to drink and that he needed to leave me alone. This was when my co-worker returned and my boss left for the restroom. I told my co-worker what had happened and said we'd better get him in a cab. He apologized profusely for our boss behavior and I left as quickly as I could and pretty shaken. The next day I got a call. It was my co-worker who had been there the night before. He told me I should be more careful because people might get the wrong idea about me. He warned me that if I told anyone what had happened, I could kiss any chance at a career in this town goodbye. He said he was calling as a friend. I never did anything about it. I was starting another job the next week and was pretty scared. There are a thousand things I have gone over and over in my mind that I could have done differently, of course. But I know that what happened to me that night and the next day was wrong and belittled me to no more than object of desire. Despite the good work I had done in that job. I'm sure this isn't the worst example in this thread. Ah, that sucks. I thought the misogyny was going to end with the boss and that the co-worker was going to be the one to redeem all of mankind. Hope the new job worked out better for you. A few weeks ago my husband's uncle came over for dinner. While we were eating, he goes on a rant about how women should not work in demanding fields because women aren't logical. They're too emotional and that women are too sensitive to handle stress in the workplace. Then he went on to say that men should not be primary caregivers for their children because they will never be as nurturing as women. It's funny because people who go on rants like that are almost always the most illogical and emotional people I've encountered. Overcame the situation quickly, but worked in the AV field for 7 years with the same company. Finally moved into a new management position and found out new hires under me were paid more than me. After 7 years with more experience, asked for and had private meeting with co-owner direct supervisor and when asked about the situation was told and I quote, You have a husband who takes care of you and no kids. Why should I pay you more when you don't need it? Although true. WTH. I promptly explained that he should reconsider his stance and we would meet the next day. The next day he stood by his original statement. I told him I was sorry he felt that way and handed in my notice. 
the look on his face was priceless. I later found out he truly was shocked when I quit. Not going to lie, it felt good. I think the next day you shouldn't have come in with your resignation, but come in with a lawyer. I'm pretty sure discrimination like that is illegal. The insinuation that you have a husband that provides for you, thus you don't need appropriate compensation is definitely sexist. Regardless, props for taking care of the situation with grace. Hope you found a better position afterwards. When I was in college I was an athletic training major for a year or so. I eventually switched for reasons unrelated to this story. Anyways, part of the major was an internship program during which we shadowed at employed by the university. On my first day it's me and another classmate who is a guy. We're both listening to this older male ad tell us how it is and ranting about how crappy the profession was. How we should think long and hard about this and generally how if he did it all over, he choose a different job. Whatever, I thought figured, he was burnt out and just pee that at our huge basketball football school you, con he, was stuck being the trainer for the track team. However, he then turns to me and singles me out as a female saying how we are never as reliable as professionals because we really have instincts to stay at home and have babies and if the baby is sick, what will you do? You'll stay home and skip work, blah blah blah. Continuous comments about how women are inferior because our priorities are programmed to be babies and family first. I was floored. I had no idea how to react to such blatant sexism and hurtful comments directly to my face ups on first meeting me. I wanted to cry. Needless to say, I freaking hated that guy and the rest of the bulls internship. I work in a mostly male industry. In the office, there's only two women. We share a space and split a lot of duties. We're also the only ones, as far as I know, who keep any of the shared spaces tidy, but since I use these spaces, I don't mind wiping off the counter in the kitchen space every so often, or cleaning up the bathroom once in a while. Plus, this keeps costs down, since we don't have to hire a cleaning service. One time, though, one of our co-workers burst into our space absolutely furious. His office? A total sty. He'd had someone from another firm come to see him, and he was embarrassed and ashamed at the state of his workspace. Food left all over, paperwork disorganized, nothing had been dusted for weeks. This was his personal office, mind you, the mess was entirely his own doing, but for some reason he thought it was our job to clean up after him. I had it spelled out for me numerous times in the church I grew up in that women were spiritually weaker than men and needed to be protected from themselves. When I was nearing the end of high school the bulk of the church advised me against going to college or even to the library, because there were secular books that might let me astray. I was told the best thing I could do was to save myself for marriage, and then be a submissive wife and to keep myself busy by popping out as many children as I could. That learning was a waste for women since they were only good for work within the church or motherhood. If I didn't do this, I'd fall into the trap of secular humanism. I'd become a godless, lesbian baby killer and destroy my soul by entering into godless non-traditional ray, egalitarian, relationships. It made me feel like I was worthless as a human being, only valued for my womb and vilified for my mind, and coerced by controlling buttholes who felt entitled to push me around. I went to college and became what they feared and hated, and committed social suicide for doing so. My life is better for it. I went into my city's local version of microcenter, the only place I can think of in the US that's similar to what we have here, looking for parts to build myself a new rig. I am female, I've done this several times before, for myself and family members, though I usually order parts online, as my job keeps me odd hours and I rarely have enough time to eat and sleep, let alone spend hours in a store, I figured it would be nice to spend a rare free Saturday picking out parts in person, I was wrong, I spent the whole time getting talked down to, the condescending tones and visible sneering I encountered were ridiculous. The outright hatred emanating from a few of the guys was palpable. The guy who offered to walk around with me and help was a total butthole. He tried to sell me parts that I knew weren't compatible. He tried to sell me things I didn't need. He tried to sell me things that didn't have the specs I was looking for. He tried to talk me into a $700 touchscreen monitor, telling me that it would be really cool to play Farmville with. I asked him, politely, if he could just leave me to my own devices, and he rolled his eyes and walked off. 
As I continued through the store, I would notice other employees at the ends of aisles stopping to take a look at me. There was a group of 5 or 6 at one point, just standing there whispering to each other and looking away when I looked at them. When it came time to check out, all the immature little bastards were at the counter, but none of them would come over to help. I mean, I was about to drop nearly $1400 on this stuff, and no one wanted the commission? Eventually, the manager came out of his office and rang me up. When everything was done and paid for, he asked if I had a pleasant shopping experience. I told him what had happened, and he said, and I quote, Oh sweetie, I'm sure you're just imagining it. I think I'll just stick to Tiger Direct or Newegg. Then you can imagine me shifting my business to Newegg. Have a nice day. I told my grandpa that I was starting a PhD in physics. He said that's nice. But you should know that women don't belong in science. They are just naturally stupider than men. So it might be hard for you. My grandpa is a brilliant scientist himself and I always looked up to him. So hearing something like that from him for the first time was devastating. I'm so sorry. It hurts so much when the people you look up to let you down so much. I hope you do brilliantly getting your PhD. A male professor in a different department was offering a course covering quantitative modeling of neural networks. When I expressed interest in the course he said, um, it contains mathematics. That course sounds cool as frick though. I live in the UAE, which is a Muslim country but fairly westernized in parts so I don't have to go about my business with my hair covered. I moved here at 13 with my family, and what shocked me the most was how my presence as a female was known. I was used to living in the US, where even today I don't get a whole lot of attention when I'm walking down the street. But here, I feel the eyes of men, mostly Indian Pakistani who aren't staring at my shining personality. It's gotten to the point where my dad has stepped in a few times to threaten the guys, when it was getting really creepy. A few months ago, my mom and brother were traveling by ourselves back to the US for the summer. Our seats were screwed up and I had to sit with strangers on the plane. I was seated next to this rather large, mid-40s Pakistani man and inwardly I immediately made my judgement but willed myself not to outwardly judge him. He had done nothing at that point deserving of my judgement, other than being Pakistani. Halfway through my flight, I feel a hand on my thigh as I'm trying to sleep. This sucker thinks I'm asleep, and takes the opportunity to grope a 16 year old girl. I had my head on the tray, and my heart raced because I didn't know what to do. I thought if I pretended to stay asleep, he'd stop. He didn't. He continued to grope my thigh, touch my inner thigh area, and fondle my breast. The lights were dim and we both had the blankets on, so his hand I'm assuming was difficult to see. Eventually I just shooed his hand away and continued the flight. I wish I had said or done something then. Not as serious a story as others, but one that still makes me grit my teeth thinking about it. I work at a video game store and was checking a controller for broken sticking buttons. A man expresses his amazement that I know how to hold a controller the right way. When I was 25, I was in a merry core. My position involved assisting people in the computer lab and resource room teaching classes on various programs and online applications, and I was the general first level tech support for the office. I can't tell you how many times people didn't believe me when I said that yes, I was the computer lab assistant, and I was perfectly capable of helping them with their problems. Every single day, at least one guy would tell me to go find a man to help me with the computer, you don't know how to fix my problem. I sat at a cubicle at the edge of the resource room. Under a bright sign I had made that said computer problems, ask me. Men regularly went to the cubicle next to mine, where my male co-worker was helping people prepare for interviews, and ask him for help instead. Oh that reminds me of my first help desk job, I used to fix hardware. I remember people coming into the store and asking to talk to the tech. I was working at a hardware farm supply store and got a phone call from a customer who, upon hearing my voice, demanded let me talk to a man. You should have told him that he was talking to a man, just a frick with him. I have tons of stories being a female in male dominated careers most of my life. I worked at AutoZone in high school for a couple of years. I would often get discriminatory comments despite being more knowledgeable than most of the employees. Here are a few. 
I'm alone at the counter and a guy comes in. Um I'm not sure if you can help me. Is there anyone around who can help me? Nope. I'm just paid to stand here and look pretty. Happened all the time. I've had angry customers on the phone scream women shouldn't work at AutoZone simply because the computer says we don't stock products for their crappy sob or some off the wall part that we don't carry in the store and that the parts were special order only or unavailable. Yeah, because I get a thrill out of lying about having your parts in stock. I am a master welder and metal fabricator. Looking for jobs is a nightmare. After I graduated my vocational high school from metal fabrication which is highly renowned for its program and looking for a job in my field, I went on dozens of interviews. I had certifications, awards, letters of recommendation, pictures of my work, yet they would always talk down to me like I was some sort of idiot. I had one guy show me around the shop literally say if we did hire you, we would start training you to build these frames as he pointed to the guy building the frames. And I'm thinking in my head WTF. Really? 4 pieces of angle iron cut at 45 degree angles and welded together. Really? I had been fabricating, welding, and blacksmithing for 5 years at this point. It was very very disheartening to deal with and I was left with little hope due to the way they talked down to me and treated me like an idiot. I eventually found the company that would give me a shot when I was 19. I have been working as a master fabricator, welder, and blacksmith ever since. 11 years and counting. It's always hard once I am hired to gain the respect of the guys I work with, but as a woman who is like one of the guys, it doesn't take long for us to all become good friends and have fun working together with no problems. Once they see my skills and independence in the field, they treat me like any of the other guys. I was 12. I was built like a 25 year old. A friend and I were splashing around her parents pond and a friend of her father's came by. My friend's mom made me get out and cover up and made the guy leave. She had to explain why. He had been leering and obviously hadn't tried too hard to conceal it. I felt a key. Yep. 16 years old in the most conservative bathing suit on the market. Christian church camp wouldn't allow me in the pool without shorts and a t-shirt. Explained that my body was inciting lustful thoughts. Everyone else wore much more revealing suits. I was mortified. In a video game. Not the way you'd think though. See. Girls can't play lol go back to the kitchen ha 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 ha. No it was in a guild in WoW. The GM was talking with a guy in vent about a new app to the guild. He said her gear is pretty good. Her DPS checks out. I just think I can speak for everyone when I say we really don't want a girl in the raid. It gets better. When I mentioned he was being a shithead. He says look, I run my guild like a business, and girls just can't handle the stress of raiding. I mean, look at you, you're all upset about what I said there. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh god, that you can't even handle it, you are upset now is one of the most infuriating things I've heard. It makes me so stabby, it's so wrong on so many levels that rational discourse seems useless. I hope you got to a good guild after that. When I was in Egypt, me and few friends were followed, catcalled, and then grabbed at by a group of young adult men. It, of course, scared the crap out of me, because we were outnumbered and easily overpowered, even though we were less than a block from where we were staying. Luckily, that was the extent of their harassment, and we got back fine. All three of us had been living in the Middle East for months, and we were no stranger to the constant cat calls, but it was way worse in Cairo than anywhere else, not to mention the only place where men got physical with us. What might have made me angrier than that, was how an American acquaintance reacted to this story. He said he had been in Cairo before, and the American girls he was with didn't get catcalled at all. I tried to explain that of course he wouldn't witness any catcalling. He was with the women the whole time. Then he questioned what we were wearing. Surely we were wearing shorts or something low cut. No, we had been living in the Middle East for a while. Long sleeves, long pants, loose fitting. We knew the drill. I better friends with this guy now, but it definitely still irks me that he shrugs off my experience there so much. Oh god Cairo sucked. I had the hardest time in Cairo. I could not believe how physical men were. One literally was talking to me and kissed me on the lips. After grabbing my butt, I'm no thanks. And I was dressed conservative as well. But side note, the historical aspects of the city were amazing. When I was 19. 
During my first internship at a software company, there were various sexualized comments and jokes made towards me that were unprofessional and unnecessary. Closer to the end of the 4 month internship, I was brought in for a talk and informed that my provocative behavior and attire was distracting. I asked for the source of the complaint, and was told that it was an upper level executive who wishes to remain anonymous. I'm embarrassed to say I was completely overwhelmed, and instead of reporting the incident to my university for an inquiry, I cried, because I was scared I would either be fired, or given a terrible final performance review. Looking back, I should have taken action right away. I am now 22, and have thankfully had many positive experiences as a female software engineer, including my current job in the Bay Area. The one experience I had that makes me the most upset happened a few years ago. I've seen many men on the internet complaining about how girls will keep them friend zoned, despite them bending over backwards to accommodate said girls. This is the other side to those stories. I played an MMORPG for years and years, and as such, had several years long friendships. There were two men specific to this story that I was friends with, and there was no sexual side to the friendships aside from light flirting. I dated several people, online and offline, while I was friends with these two men. Over the years, I would party and raid with them, though sometimes I wouldn't see either of them for several months at a time. They were enjoyable to hang out with, and I'd heal for their parties or help them level alts, and they'd return the favors. All part of a tight-knit community that helps everyone out, right? Some time passes, and I eventually talk party less and less with one of the men, whom we'll call Q. It's okay, it's happened before, I was sure I'd see him around in the future, as always. That summer, I go to a guild meetup and meet the other man, X, a flyne, X and I really hit it off, and before long, we're long distance dating, I know, I know, I had sworn long distance relationships off, Q messages me on AIM and we get to talking, and in passing I tell him how I'm dating X now, they both have known each other for years. Due to the small, close community, he flips the frick out. He goes on a tirade about how he was waiting for me, about how I was supposed to be his woman. He was head over heels in love with me. Really? We hadn't spoken in months, and was so disappointed in me. Of all people, I had to pick X. Later, I find out that Q and X never got along. X hated how Q would flirt with all the ladies in the guild and completely ignore the men. And then Q proceeded to call me easy. Easy? Really? I had evolved from future wife and one true love to S because I decided to exclusively date X. Logic. Rejected men do not possess it. Was Q a nice guy? Sure he was nice to me. Up until the point he found out he couldn't exchange all those kindness coins he had spent on me for sex or a romantic relationship. Have you ever heard someone say the way to tell if someone is genuinely a kind person is by how they treat their waiter? Q was the guy who would make snarky comments at the waiter's expense and complain about them to their face. All the while telling you how gorgeous you look and talking with you at length about interests you are passionate about. Oh, and X. We've been happily married for nearly a year now. The gaming community is incredibly toxic to women, despite the benevolent sexism. I'd love to hear more stories from other female gamers. I'm a paralegal. One time, a client didn't like the law and then said, Listen, miss, I don't need a lady telling me what to do. Put John on the phone. I need to talk to someone who knows what's going on. I put the client on hold and yelled out to my attorney, John. Hey, John. This thinks I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm a woman. Can we withdraw? I didn't even pick the phone back up. Just hung up on him and mailed him the withdrawal letter. I also get called sweetheart and honey multiple times a day by my clients but I'll let it go since they don't mean any harm by it and it's no good upsetting clients if you can get away with it. If you were in Texas the waitresses would call you sweetheart and honey also. This isn't as severe as some of the other responses, but I go to school in a fairly large American city, and I feel objectified when I go outside, especially in the warmer months, when I'm not completely covered, the things some men say on the street are disgusting, people have followed my friends and myself down the street yelling things like let me lick your cut or I'm gonna give you a baby, in a crowded area, I've had people come up to me, and whisper in my ear and brush up against me, it's gross. A couple things stick out to me. 
First of all, where I live anyway, if you're at least an average looking female or above, you're going to get disgusting comments on the street at least once in a while. It's just inevitable sadly, as an above average looking female with a chronic B face, you have no idea how many smile honey, you'll look prettier comments I've gotten. Also the number of kitchen and bad driving jokes I've heard, from other educated, college age people, is way too dang high. There's really a point where it's just not funny anymore. People, as for specific instances that are particularly annoying. About a month ago an older guy tried to photograph my crotch while I was sitting on the bus, half asleep. I wasn't even wearing anything particularly revealing. Black leggings with a longer skirt for work. That was pretty disturbing. Also I lift weights at my university's gym, so I'm usually one of the only girls in the weight room. Luckily the vast majority of guys there are totally cool about it. But I got one comment from a douchebag bro one time when I asked if he was using the weights next to him. He gave me some stupid comment about how I would need help if I wanted to try to lift heavy honey and started laughing his head off with his stupid friend. Lastly, I went out to the bars the other night, and sitting out in front there was a group of obnoxious college aged football fans who were cat calling less than attractive girls who would walk by, just for laughs. I called them rude, and they proceeded to yell at me, not trying to sound like a crazy feminist, but you really do have to put up with a lot of bulls being a woman at times. There's nothing crazy about being a feminist if being a feminist means we get rid of the bulls. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.